Hey guys, Garrett here. You know, it's been about two years since I made my very first geothermal video and I get a lot of questions that are just kind of repeating. So I thought, what a perfect opportunity to make a top 10 frequently asked questions video regarding DIY geothermal for a closed loop system. In my first geothermal video, I made mention that the earth would change the temperature of the liquid within my loops approximately six to eight degrees, which led to the very first question, which was, how does a six to eight degree temperature difference that the earth makes heat or cool my house? You know, if it's 110 degrees outside, how am I gonna keep it at 70 degrees on the inside? Well, you have to understand that this is a heat pump system that has refrigerant within it. So this system uses three different heat exchangers within it. The first one is from the air within your house. Heat gets transferred to the refrigerant that is inside of that heat pump. The next one, the refrigerant transfers heat to that liquid that gets pumped through those loops. And then finally, heat gets transferred from the earth to the liquid within those loops. So while there may only be a six to eight degree difference that the earth makes on the temperature of those loops, the air that gets transferred to your house actually has a 20 to 30 degree difference because of that refrigerant in the middle. The refrigerant in the system gets compressed and expanded. So anytime it is expanded, it cools. Anytime that it is compressed, it heats and there can be well over a hundred degree difference between that compressed refrigerant versus that expanded refrigerant so that's the big thing that you have to take away is it has refrigerant it is a heat pump and it has different processes that it transfers heat the second most frequently asked question is what type of pipe do you use that you bury within your yard and there are two different types that you can use with this the first is hdpe and it's very specific that you need to have sdr 11 sdr 11 refers to the pipe wall thickness and that is the correct one for hdpe the second type of pipe is pex a and you have to remember that PEX has an A grade, a B grade, and a C grade. B and C won't work for this. You have to use PEX A. The third question is what size is the pipe that you're putting within the ground? Well, my system, which is honestly a very typical system, the loops that I put out there are three quarters of an inch, and that's an inner diameter. These loops come back into my house into a trunk line that is an inch and a quarter. Your pipe size is gonna be dependent upon the design of your system, but mine is a pretty typical system, so that's usually what it's gonna be. And if you're wondering what the length is, again, it's gonna be dependent upon the soil type that you have, the depth that you do this, but mine, each loop is 600 feet long. So if I have a four ton unit, I have four loops, each of them being 600 feet long. The fourth question is, do you use a non-pressurized system or a pressurized system? And for me, I prefer the non-pressurized system. It's just really simplicity of the whole thing. It's a heck of a lot more DIY friendly. A pressurized system is going to have a dedicated pump as well as an expansion tank within it, but they can be kind of difficult to get all of the air purchased out of whenever you're starting up this system, as well as getting that initial liquid into the system. The non-pressurized system is really easy because it's kind of an all-in-one package. It's got the, the tank and the pumps all-in-one, as well as a couple of valves. And it's really easy just to fill up this tank, let it pump through, and it will automatically get all of the air out of the system. So I like the simplicity of the non-pressurized systems. Question number five is, can rodents chew through your pipe? And the answer is yes, actually they can. And that's one reason that I like to put my pipes as deep into the ground as I possibly can, because rodents have trouble getting to those deeper depths. So you're gonna need to know what type of soil you have. You know, I have clay and our clay is incredibly hard for anyone to dig through. And I just don't have any rodents that can dig through all of that clay to get to my pipes, which are 10 feet down. But if you have sandy soil or something like that, it's real easy to dig through. You may have a problem, especially if you don't put your loops very deep. So find out what rodents you have, what type of soil you have, and then how deep can those rodents get? And then put your pipes underneath that. The sixth question is, can you just do a single trench and then stack your pipes one on top of the other a couple of feet uh, apart from each other? And the answer is no, you cannot. You need a minimum of 10 feet between any of your pipes. Now, if you wanted to dig down 20 feet, 
and then put the next layer of pipe at the 10 foot level, that would work. But it's probably going to be kind of expensive. Uh, if you are space limited, that actually might work. But if you're thinking that you can do it every two feet, you can't. Number seven asks the question, should you make your loop to trunk connection inside of your house or out in your yard? And that's really going to be based on personal preference. If it's a, uh, if you're hiring a pro company to come do it, they're probably going to do it in the yard. If you're using HDPE, they are going to have the specialized tools that it takes to fuse those pipes together. Uh, from a DIY standpoint, that's just not something that you can really do unless you hire someone to do that for you. For me, I want any connection that I have to be serviceable. And if it's out in the yard, it can't be serviced. So I want all of my loop lines to come through the house and then join to the trunk. And if I do have a leak, I can see it and I can repair it. But it's gonna be personal preference and what tools do you have access to? I didn't wanna buy a fusing machine that I didn't even know how to use for well over $1,000 to be able to do it. So from a DIY standpoint, I recommend bringing them into the house. Question number eight is what do you do in rocky soil? And I'm not talking about solid rock or something like that just soil that has a bunch of rocks within it well you're gonna dig down as you normally would and then you're gonna need to put a layer of uh, nice clean soil in place to then put your loops on and then another layer of soil nice clean soil on top of it and I'd recommend two feet of soil underneath, two feet of soil on top, and then you can backfill with whatever your normal uh, backfill would be. Question number nine is what do you do if you undersized your loop field, if you messed up within the design phase of this? Well, uh, you aren't just completely stuck. All you really have to do is add another loop. It's as simple as that. So you're gonna have to do some extra digging. You're gonna have to shove it through your house if it goes through your house to the trunk line and then just make that connection. That adds an entire another loop and changes the whole characteristics of that loop field. The last question is how long should this system work? Well, the base unit, the uh, air handler and the compressor and all of that kind of stuff should last 20 to 30 years and it should be readily replaceable. The pumps that you're gonna use uh, probably are gonna last 10 years or something like that, but they use typical taco pumps, so it is something that is readily available. The loop field that you have outside is gonna last anywhere from 50 to 100 years. Realistically, it should last forever because it's HDPE and it's not going to break down for thousands of years. So it should last well beyond your lifetime. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have any other questions that I did not answer in this video or I haven't answered in some of my other videos. Uh, I can always make another one of these FAQ videos. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you next time.